Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. I'm back with another way to use this gratitude journaling kit. I love it and I can't get enough of it. And it's November and <laughs> it's still fall. So these beautiful trees I think are still applicable. And I think I wanted to make something. So you can use whatever papers you have. You do not need to use this particular kit. You can use scrapbook paper, other digitals, other digitals that are set up like a journaling kit might, might be easy, but whatever you have on hand, if you like this design, I hope you'll make one. There's no sewing. I did use a stapler to put the couple of pages in there. And I'm gonna show you how I did this little bit of trim and things too. So I love it. Again, I think a great way to introduce somebody maybe to gratitude, the practice of, of gratitude journaling without overwhelming them. Nice, simple, it's pretty flat. It would be a good happy mail, whatever. I am going to um, include some version whether it's this or one of the other folders or whatever, for most of my patrons, um, in, in some fashion, they're going to get something because I'm very grateful for them um, in the month of November. So if you're a patron, keep your eye out. You'll get something that I've made with this kit um, throughout the month or, or whatever. So that's coming for November packages. If you are interested in that, you can hop over to my Patreon and find out about the memberships and things available on there. I send out happy mails uh, to paid subscribers there. Okay, so what do you need if you want to make one of these little mini journals? You need a piece of paper, like scrapbook, cardstock, digital, printed on some type of cardstock. And to make it the size I made it, we're using a piece that is 10 and a quarter by five and a half. And I will put the measurements and everything for you in the description. So if you wanna just enjoy watching and then go back or refer to that as you go, um, that'll be there for you. So 10 and a quarter, five and a half. Now, we are gonna fold it in half. No, we're not, yes we are, but we're gonna fold it in half. <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay, we're going to fold it in half. And then I kind of eyeballed the pockets. So this one I am going to fold over just to have like kind of a, a, a little vision of that tree. If you want the measurement, that is one and a quarter inches. So if you want to uh, lay yours on your scoreboard and score it one and a quarter, that will give you that fold. And then this one, I want it to um, my cover to be not not the same. Um, I, don't, I can't find the words I want. I want it to be like this. See where it doesn't quite come to the edge. I just wanted a little different look. So this pocket is going to be a little deeper on this side. Not a problem. That one is one and three quarters. So again, if you want a score, lay it in your scoreboard. Uh, in the correct direction and score it one and three quarter inches and then flip it around upside down and score this one at one and a quarter. So one and three quarters, one and a quarter. And you will have a full, or you can just eyeball it like I did. <laughs> Live a little. Um, look, look at your design of your papers. Don't worry that this is plain. I'm going to show you. I decided to intentionally pick one of the pages in this kit that had a journaling page on the right side so that when it becomes the cover, we can then layer one of the smaller size journaling pages as a decoration and an extra little flip and page on our journal. Hope that makes sense. I have already done some inking, but we're gonna do a little more. And don't glue these pockets down yet, these side pockets, because I'm going to, um, we're gonna work on this cover first. And I actually threaded my fibers underneath this pocket, and used some scotch tape to make it a nice smooth pocket uh, inside. And then it holds that fiber that's a little difficult um, because it's so thin, you know, to, 
uh, glue on. So I'm gonna show you how to do that if you wanna use a fiber or a piece of lace or thread or something. So now in this particular fall journaling kit, I also have the, the small pages that you can print out to make a mini journal. You're gonna need three, really two and a half. So pick out three and, and you have to decide which one you want to be your front cover. And I think I'm gonna make this panel be my front cover. Is that the panel I want? Oh, it's so hard to choose. Yes, we're just gonna go with this one and I'm not gonna perseverate. Okay, so when I cut this, I'm not cutting it exactly in half. I'm actually doing a little more than, than half. I'm, I'm cutting this at three and a quarter inches. So this is three and a quarter inches and this one obviously is, it's only like three. So about a quarter inch more than half and look at the design and you can decide how you want yours now because of the way this tree is and the way this one was this one I have opening just like a, a, a normal book how it opens this one I'm gonna have this flap open this way because I want to make this the hinge part so I'm coming over right at a quarter of an inch again if you want to score yours you can and I'm going back and forth. Now, I can attach this hinge like I did on my prototype. I just did it on the other side where you see it. Or I can look at the design and the pattern and decide, do I want to attach the hinge this way? I think I'm going to do it the way I did in the prototype. So, all that means is once you have your quarter inch hinge, whichever side you want it on. Okay, this one I did on the right, this one I did on the left. This one's just gonna open a little differently. It's gonna be extra special. I'm just gonna glue it by the hinge to the front of my journal. And it's a pretty simple, straightforward way to decorate the cover of this journal and then still have this lined paper underneath if we want to, to write in, um, journal or, you know, put the person's name who it belongs to or whatever. So I just put glue on that one section and then I'm gonna decide where I want it on my page. I'm gonna stick it down. Now you wanna give that time to adhere, but that is going to, on the cover it'll open this way and then our journal will open as normal fun, right? Just a little different. If that flappy bothers you, this one it sort of just looks like a smaller page. Put a Velcro dot on there if that bothers you. It's not bothering me right now, so we'll see how I do. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out one of the affirmations or quotes. Um, this one I did, You Matter. I think I'm going to do You Are Enough for this one. So this is from the sheet that prints like half sheet size, I guess. They also come on a full sheet size, which is a little big for, for this size journal. But what I really like about that one is you can pick whatever percentage you wanna print it at. And like I said, if you have a, a Christmas, if you're you know really into making your Christmas crafts right now or your Christmas journals this would do well as a as, as a little mini Christmas journal you could use um, some of those papers but I'm just not quite ready to let go I do a lot of gratitude journaling in the month of November that's why I like to make them in October so I have them ready but I'm just I'm just not quite finished making some so all right I have this glossy kind of thread and I realized it almost looks just like the colors are perfect with this kit and it almost looks like um, the little leaves on all the trees and this is one I got years ago in a at a yard sale 
in a big bin with a bunch of others, but I never used it. And I don't even know if you can still get it, but it's Plymouth Yarn brand, and the color is Paradise. And I haven't looked to see if you can get it or not, but I know it's, it's old, but it does match really well, which is fun. Okay, I'm not cutting any yet. I'll give you some measurements here in a second, but I am going to, I want my... I want my thread to, to loop in in here. And I think what I did is, I know what I did. Okay, I laid it in, it's very fine, and I didn't think glue was really going to, to be my friend or work. So I'm using some masking tape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tape this down to hold it still to make it easy for me to work with. And I am gonna loop, and I looped it a few times and then ended up tying a little bow at the top on this one and have some dangles hanging down. I'm just thinking though I might like it if I just, I actually left a few more strands on the front of the journal. I just think that would look nice, like that, instead of just the one. So let's do that for this one. And I'm gonna come back inside. Now all of these are gonna need to get taped down to hold everything nice and secure. So I'm gonna cut that. And then we're gonna tape it down. It's that easy. And I did it like a few different pieces of tape and I tried to make it as smooth as possible knowing I'm going to be putting things in this pocket and I don't really want things to get caught up on it if I can help it. It seems to be working okay. So that's my method, that's my madness, that's where my mind is right now. Whoa. And this is, I've told you guys about this masking tape. It's super old, don't even know where it came from. And it is super sticky. And I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do when it um, runs out. I guess I'll have to get a new roll. And it won't be all wonky shaped like this. <laughs> all right, so there we go. Now, if I want to, I can tie a piece on and do a little bow at the top. We'll try that and see. See how that goes. I'm gonna give myself quite a bit of extra to make it easier on myself to tie. Let's see. Again, not the easiest choices when you're doing bows and things, but maybe it'll be okay. All right, super fun. All right, and I'm gonna leave those long for now. If I wanna trim them off later, I can. I probably will add a little dot of glue right to that knot after I'm done crafting today. I'm not gonna do it right now while I'm working because I'll get the glue everywhere, but it's just something um, to remember to do at the end. Oop. And I need to glue this pocket down and it's pulling a little tight where I tied that. So what you need to do, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing, is I'm just adding glue like I normally do to the top and bottom edge to hold this little pocket closed. It just didn't really wanna open for me. But I think it'll be okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue the back pocket as well, top and bottom. Now in these pockets, this is the inside of my little mini journal, I am going to add a couple of the journaling prompts uh, to practice gratitude, one in each pocket, and I'm just folding them in half. And I've done this in the other mini journals that I've made using this kit. They just slide in there and fit nicely. And again, to introduce maybe somebody new to, to gratitude journaling. All right, I'm gonna take them out for right now so that I don't get them messed up while I am adding our interior pages, which is super easy. So I'm going to ink that so we can see the center. All right, I think I'm done with that. So to make your inside pages, 
Again, I'm just using two of the smaller size journaling pages that come in this kit. So I'm just cut them out, ink them, fold them in half. If you're using a different paper kit, these measure six inches by four and three quarter inches. So you need two pieces of paper, six inches by four and three quarter inches. And I did print these on both sides. And then just decide which one you want to be on the front and which one you want to be inside. All right, and again, I'm gonna ink on the folds. So one of the things, sometimes I'm like, what should I talk about? What should I talk about while I'm inking and doing other things in my videos? And I realized I have these journaling prompts and I have not even looked at the two that I chose yet. So I may be kicking myself later. I was thinking I might just grab one and answer that prompt or just talk about that prompt to you guys while I am crafting. So let's see how that goes. We don't have that much more left to do. Um, Oh gosh, list five people that have had a positive impact on you and how. It's definitely a good way to give gratitude. I have, I'm so blessed and have so many people in my life. Let's think, of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is family members. Um, I had one of the best mothers in the whole world. So let, let's start, I, I kind of want to start with my husband, but I also want to start with my mom. So, um, Sorry, honey, we're gonna go with mama. Her name was Sally. Why? Um, all right, all I'm gonna do is use my stapler and I'm gonna line these up and then I'm just gonna staple right there. Let me ink this um, crease too so you can see. And to be safe, let's paper clip them in so they don't wiggle around on us. Okay, so my mom, why? She was wonderful. Uh, definitely one of those people that practiced kind of that unconditional thing, even as a kid. Like, she really enjoyed my brother and I. Um, she, she genuinely, you could feel she liked us, if that makes sense. So... Um, made me feel safe and was my best friend. So we'll stop there on that before I cry. Let's see, um, my husband, my children, again, hard to decide. I'm just eyeballing this. If you want to, you can mark where you wanna put your staples. I'm, ju I'm just eyeballing mine. And I did two. If you use your little, well, I don't think the mini stapler would fit up in there. I could have used that little weird stapler thing that I got in my craft haul, but just regular staple works. Stapler works just fine. Um, let's my husband. <laughs> he this is my second husband. His name's Dan. I've talked about him before. He just and I think I may have even told you guys this in a video a long time ago. He's one of those people that just has a generosity of spirit. And I didn't do a great job stapling this, so it looks a little crooked, but we can fix it. Um, and this is why I always kind of go through and fold papers as I go. Um, generosity of spirit. He just, you know, that's his love language. How can he help? How can he fix things? Um, what do you need? And it's very selfless and it's not like tit for tat at all with him. And it's with everybody in his life. He's kind to our neighbors, very generous with our children and our family, our pets, me, his coworkers. Um, yeah, he is someone I'm just so grateful that came into my life um, after an uh, 18 year marriage failed. And um, we found each other. And he had been married over 20 years um, to his first wife. So anyway, good times. It, it's definitely one of those stories where you can find joy and happiness again, even though divorce is not something you ever wanted to experience. Let's see. What are we going to do? Oh, we're going to make a pocket. And what I did in this one is I used the full sheet of quotes, the full size, and just picked one. I extended it a little, and I made this pocket. So let's do that. I'll pick another quote and show you how I extended that out. So that was two people. Let's see. Pick a quote. Oh, I like this one, the Maya Angelou, and then we'll just add an extender like I did 
on the other one. So, and this is part of the page that I trimmed off, so we'll use this to extend our pocket so we have a little bit of color. Um, let's see. I'm going to say for the, my third person, you know, I mean, both, all of my children, I have five of them, but my, my daughter, Sarah, who's my biological daughter, and then my son, Daniel, he's my oldest. Um, you know, I am so grateful that they are just such, all five of the kids, but my daughter and son, such good human beings. So I'm going to clump all of them into one so that that'll be my third person that I'm grateful for. But I could go on about all five of them and different things about them and why. <laughs> but good human beings. Um, yeah, good friends, good good employees, good students. I mean, all, all of the things that as a parent you would want. Yes, we have had bumps. <laughs> we have challenges. All families do. Um, and I'm not one really to spend a lot of time, you know, on wh what were the things that were hard, right? Um, on social media anyway. But, you know, how fortunate am I to have such fun, happy kids? Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to go like I did on the other and just extend it on one side or if I want to put a little bit on each side. Let me show you what I mean. I just added a little extra on this one side. I think it kind of gave it a fun off-centered look. What I could do is I could layer this right on top of this panel. <sighs> All I did on that one is I just glued a strip of paper to one end. We'll do it the same way. We'll just see how big of a piece of paper we need. I want my pocket to nestle in here. Let's see. So I need a one and a half inch strip from here. So let me think, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go way back on my fourth person and pick somebody that impacted me early in my professional career. And I, again, have been, I need this to be the same height. So let me measure this. You know, I'm gonna glue it and then just trim it off by hand and that way I make sure that I do not end up um, with it too short. All right, I'm just gonna glue it right on. So way back early in my career, I had a boss. And like I said, I've been fortunate to have some really good uh, professional relationships in my life. All right, I'm just going to trim this off. And, but this gentleman, his name was Dave. And I think I've talked about him too. Um, Dave Kutchback. And he just had this way about him. He talked very slow. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I can go fast. <laughs> and my professional career um, before I stopped working this year it was always in the field of people with disabilities. Guys, I am going to glue this just like a normal pocket on the three sides and I'm going to put a little bit of glue here in the middle so that it sticks down and doesn't gape open because it's just going to fold into the crease of our little mini journal. Um, what about Dave? I just learned so much from him. And I was young when I started working for him. I was like 24, I think. And um, he was compassionate, kind. He believed in the work that we did. He believed in the people that he worked with. Um, but he, like I said, he, he wasn't afraid to slow down. And again, I can get wound up a little bit. And, and I can remember some of the best coaching sessions he had with me. He would say, let's take a walk. <laughs> and at times, we, this was in St. Louis, Missouri, it'd be cold outside. So we'd walk. There was a track around this um, workshop area, gym area of one of our buildings. And we would walk um, around around the, the floor, the work floor where people were working. Um, back in the day of sheltered workshops for people with disabilities, Happy to say we closed those, but um, yeah, we would do that. Or we would go outside when it was a nice day and walk. Um, I had a building in downtown St. Louis, and we walked 
many a mile together working, but listening, talking, um, sharing ideas. And he was just a great mentor. And he did pass away a few years ago. Um, and I guess it was one of those things I just always thought I'd see him again, if that makes sense. Um, but I did go on to have a wonderful career, even after we moved away. Um, lots of opportunities, but he was never far from my mind. So that was Steve. Um, oh, there's so many people I could pick. It said to do five. All right, that bow really needs that dot of glue. I'm going to go ahead and put it on there because it keeps slipping. And I'm going to let it sit here while we do two tags to go in those pockets. And I'm going to pick something to go on one of those other little journaling pages. And all I'm going to do here, what did I do for these? I think I just decorated them with the ribbon and just left it for someone to journal with. So we'll do that. So one I'm going to poke a hole in and we'll do one this way. And then one I'll show you how I added that little cluster. So I, mean, I know I'm yapping a lot in this one. You guys can put me on mute if you don't want to hear my rambling. Um, Jennifer, if you're listening, you always comment. You're so sweet. She's like, I don't, I love listening to you ramble, which is such a sweet comment. Um, okay, number five, let me pick. I am gonna go with, I'm gonna go with one of my college roommates, and I could pick both of them because they both impacted me in so many ways. But I'm gonna go with Heather today because I have learned so much from her about resilience and I'm so grateful. Um, she has had um, a beautiful life. She has a beautiful family, beautiful children, but she's had, a, she's had a, a, a tough life. All I did was I did three strands and I looped them in. And even though this is super, I don't know, is flimsy the right word? Um, I still think it works okay. I'm gonna give it a haircut and that one's gonna be done. And then the other one, I just made a little cluster and then stuck it down. And it kind of fluffed a different way. Um, I don't know. Her first husband passed away from cancer when her kids were little. She was a single mom. Um, she's lost both of her parents. Again, our, my, my dad is the last of, of the parents living of, um, of all my college and high school friends and stuff that I keep in touch with. But And he's 81 but, you know, they, they died still younger th than they should have um, in recent years um, or in years past. Anyway, just, just some challenges. But she stays positive. She shows up. She does all the things. I don't know. She's just um, somebody I'm so grateful to have in my life and have had in my life for like 35 years or more. And, um, yeah, just super impressed with her. Um, I have so many friends I could say that about, right? But I only had to pick five people today, and that was hard. Um, and I'm going to say one more thing about my daughter, Sarah, and I talk about her a lot. She is just, um, I don't know. I just like how she views the world. Maybe I'll put it that way. She just has this really interesting and, um, caring compassionate way and she sees beauty in everyday things I don't know she's an artist just anyway just wanted to say something else about her too look at that ha, kind of fun okay enough rambling I did only did one prompt but that was like a five-parter one maybe I should have picked up the other one what was this one what is something special, unique, or extraordinary about yourself? Oh my gosh, I'm glad I didn't pick that one. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to talk about yourself, isn't it? And to compliment yourself. We'll save that one for another day. All right, I'm going to be conscious of that little bit of glue I put there. And whoever ends up with this lovely little mini journal will have these two prompts to get them thinking. And then this quote in the middle, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before, Maya Angelou. And then it's got two super cute little tags. And I think the last thing that I wanna do is I'm just gonna grab one more 
of the affirmations and just glue it to one of the pages. Not that we have to, but we'll just do be grateful every day. I There's several blank pages in here for someone to journal on. But again, I'm kind of envisioning this one maybe being for someone who's just getting into the, the habit and give them a little, take up a little bit of that space for them. <laughs> and maybe um, decorate the page a touch too. All right, I'm being careful of that glue on my bow, making life hard for myself. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this project. I hope that you will use whatever papers you have and make a fun little mini journal. Um, if you wanna see the papers I used, everything will be linked for you in the description of the video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. That's the biggest help. You can help me and other creators that you like to watch on YouTube. It really makes a difference. So thank you. Thanks. Um, and so if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That would be so very appreciated. And again, I'm grateful for all of you guys. All right. Hope you liked this project. Have a great one. Bye.